Uh, I'm um, her fiance. Um, and if anybody do know anything, um, could you please, you know, contact this uh, office and let them know? Because um, it's, it's just unusual. She would never not go without talking to those kids. You know, even me, you know, she would not go without talking to me, you know. Tiffany Foster left her home to run some errands and she hasn't been seen since. Today we learned it was Foster's 15-year-old daughter who alerted the family that her mom was missing. Foster's fiance said the last time he spoke to her was when she left their home. Baby, if you're, if you're out there, you know, we're still looking for you to come home, you know. You know we miss you. We miss you very much. They checked the local grocery stores, like camera footage, and they didn't see her on any of them. So, you know, I don't believe she even made it to this area. We have been able to uncover a lot of evidence in this case, which shows that the relationship between Reginald and Tiffany was not good at all for the last week of her life. You know, like I've said before, I never want to accuse someone of something like this, but it just seems like with the evidence, that he knows something and the simple fact that he's not saying what he knows that makes me feel like he's guilty of something negative it's just hard to to cope with because i feel that somebody out there knows something even if you were having a bad day you would always wind up laughing like she just had that about her where she could just make you laugh and I really miss that. A few days later, her car was found in this parking lot in College Park with all of her personal belongings still inside. Do your investigators believe she drove there? Or, I mean, do, do you have any evidence to suggest that she was taken there or I, she drove there? Or? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Just a lot of mysteries here. Yes, sir. To not be able to pick the phone up and call her, it hurts. Major developments today in the disappearance case of Tiffany Foster in Coweta County. The mother of three has not been seen since early March 2021. Investigators have evidence now that Tiffany Foster was murdered and is never coming home. He deserves everything that's, that's going to come to him. At 10 o'clock this morning, Reginald Robertson has been charged with felony murder, malice murder, concealing the death of another. My sister was such a sweet person, man. She was a very loved person. Like, who, like, why would somebody want to hurt her? He needs to pay for what he did. And I want to get justice for my sister. The final question, where is Tiffany Foster? You can't explain the feeling. You know, I have sad days where I just cry all day. I just want to know where my baby is. I'm sorry. As I say, like, when I have to think about it, <laughs> it's just so hurtful. It leads your mind to think of so many things on the spectrum of, you know, from the worst case scenario to, okay, she, you know, she's gonna walk through the door. Always passionate about the law and wanted to make a difference, Tiffany Foster is described as a caring, free-spirited woman always ready for a challenge. At 35 years young, Tiffany is an inspiration to many. Friends and family said she is resilient and does not let anything hinder her dreams. We would always like go out to dinner or like she would be my travel buddy. So anytime, you know, I wanted to go somewhere, like we've been in New Orleans, Florida, we were supposed to go to um, Houston. Um, we've always talked about going there and like, just, you know, to hang out and try their different foods and stuff like that, and just experience the culture. Um, so that's our thing that we would do. We would always, we're like foodies. So we would always like try to find different restaurants or, you know, just places to go um, we would do things at the at our homes. Either she would come over and we'd do like game night. Um, it's it's hard when you have that one person that you would always call. Like even if I'm you know having an issue at school or at work or something, I would always call her and 
it it's one of those situations where even if you were having a bad day you would always wind up laughing like she just had that about her where she could just make you laugh and i really miss that like i can hear you know her voice in my head like her laughter and how she would call my name and stuff like that so i'm trying to like just hold on to those things but it's it's a bittersweet thing tiffany is known for her infectious energy and for always being ready to help out her family and friends tiffany is a woman of many talents she is a loving mother of three a dedicated student and a passionate advocate for justice she held a job as a security guard at hello fresh in her county she was studying criminal justice at georgia military college with the plans on working in law enforcement despite her hectic schedule tiffany always found time to enjoy her hobbies be a mom and spend time with her fiance reginald robertson on the outside looking in Everything seemed fine for the couple, but unfortunately, Tiffany may have been suffering behind closed doors. According to reports by NCST.Report, on November 13, 2020, a Coena County dispatcher received a nine-second cell phone call. Before the call disconnected, the call taker noted, quote-unquote, female hurt, crying and screaming, you gotta go. The phone call mapped to the location of 611 Lower Fayetteville Road, Noonan, Georgia. Two units with the Noonan Police Department were dispatched to that location while the dispatcher attempted to call the phone number back. A male, presumed to be Reginald, answered the phone and claimed he dialed accidentally. He also stated that he was at their residence, 2814 Lakeside Way which was untrue. He disconnected the call again, but while he was doing that, the dispatcher was able to confirm that the cell phone belonged to Tiffany. Therefore, the dispatcher updated the two responding units, but a third unit passing the location observed Tiffany and Reginald Carr weaving on the road. The couple were stopped, but after running the vehicle's tags, as well as the driver's license of both Reginald and Tiffany during the 18-minute traffic stop, the officer advised they found a slim Jim and bolt cutters for the vehicle and allowed them to drive away. Sadly, that wasn't the last suspicious incident that was reported between the couple. On March 2nd, 2021, Tiffany was reported missing, but once police investigated his whereabouts, all evidence pointed towards him. At the time of her disappearance, Tiffany lived at Creekside at White Oak, an apartment complex on Lakeside Way in Noonan, Georgia. According to her fiance, Tiffany left her residence for the grocery store on March 1st, but never returned home. Reginald claims he became worried around 10 p.m. when she hadn't returned. However, he did not call the police right away. They checked the local grocery stores, like camera footage, and they didn't see her on any of them. So. You know, I don't believe she even made it to the store. I felt like it was a made up story um, that she left and, you know, he was went to sleep. And when he woke up, she wasn't there. But I'm not going to go to sleep if my spouse or person is not next to me, especially if it's one, two o'clock in the morning. Did you try to call her? Why would you not call us to say, hey, is Tiffany over your house? He didn't even call the police. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like it, it doesn't fit. It's very frustrating because you lived with my sister and her children. Like, if you didn't want to give us a peace of mind, give her children a peace of mind. And you are choosing not to do that. Who hurts a child like that? When Tiffany failed to attend her college class the following day on March 2nd, the sheriff's office was notified and a missing persons case was officially opened. Now to a Fox 5 News alert. Investigators are calling the disappearance of a Coweta County mother of three suspicious. No one has seen Tiffany Foster since the beginning of this month. Tiffany Foster's sister told me that they talked nearly every single day. But when those family phone calls stopped on March 1st, she knew something was terribly wrong. So I'm asking if anyone has heard or seen anything, no matter how big or small you may think it is, please come forward. Coweta County investigators say Tiffany Foster was last seen the morning of March 1st when she left her apartment complex at Creekside at White Oak. 
The last person to see her was her fiance, Reginald Robertson. If you have any information on the disappearance of Tiffany Foster, please call the Coweta County Sheriff's Office. In Coweta County, Doug Evans, Fox 5 News. Once her family also found out that their loved one was nowhere to be found, they immediately started their own search and immediately start asking her fiance questions. On March 8, 2021, one week into the missing case, Tiffany's vehicle, a 2020 dark blue Nissan Altima with a temporary Georgia license plate was found and abandoned in College Park, Georgia. Her vehicle was also about 30 miles away from her residence. Authorities found Tiffany's personal belongings inside her vehicle, including her purse, debit card, and keys to her home, but her cell phone was missing. Tiffany's phone was last active at 2.58 p.m. on March 1, 2021, in a location north of White Oak, Georgia, which is 22 miles away from College Park. While investigators continued searching, her family and fiancé pleaded for help. That week, a press conference was held by the sheriff's office in hopes of getting help. Um, thank you all for coming. My name is Toby Nix. I'm an investigator here with the Coweta County Sheriff's Office. To my left is the family of Tiffany Nicole Foster. I'm going to run through a timeline of, of events real quick. On March 1st, 2021, Tiffany Nicole Foster left her apartment at Creekside at White Oak off of Lakeside Way to go shopping. She sent a text message to her mother, and this is the last text message that she sent from her phone. On March the 2nd, Ms. Foster did not report to her college class. Later that evening, she was reporting mis reported missing to this agency. On March the 5th, Ms. Foster did not show up at work for her next scheduled shift. March the 8th, Ms. Foster's vehicle was located in College Park, Georgia. It's a 2020 charcoal gray Nissan Altima. There were some personal effects of hers found in the car, a credit card and a purse. <clears throat> On March 11th, 2021, Ms. Foster missed a flight to Texas. She had uh, prepaid flight tickets to and to Texas and back here. Since March the 1st, 2021, Ms. Foster has had no contact with family or friends and has not had any social media activity. Um, I'm going to turn the floor over to her sister, Kimberly Bryan, to um, speak. Ms. Bryan. Um, I just wanted to briefly speak about my sister. Um, she is a kind and loving person beautiful inside and out. Um, she's a mother of three and um, she's my best friend. Um, this has devastated our family. Um, as you can imagine, no child should have to worry about where their mother is and the condition that their mother is in. Um, so I'm asking if anyone has heard or seen anything, no matter how big or small you may think it is, please come forward. Please come forward so that our family can have, you know, the peace of knowing what is going on with our with my sister, um, that where she is, her condition. Um, you know, my mom was supposed to speak, but this has devastated her. She doesn't know where her daughter is, and I can only imagine I'm coming from a sister's uh, point of view, and it's heartbreaking to have to look my niece and nephews in the face, and you know, I don't know what to tell them. So, again, if you know anything, please, I'm, I'm begging, I'm begging the public, please come forward with any information. Thank you. Can you, you say that your sister has children. Can you tell us their ages, please? Um, yes, yeah, she has a son that's 17, a daughter that's 15, and a, another son that is 10. Okay. Um, and this, uh, obviously, is very unusual for your family to lose contact. Were you, did, did you stay in close contact typically? Yes. Uh, and can you tell us about that? Um, yes, we would talk, you know, on a weekly basis. Um, it's four of us. Um, I have four sisters, so we always would communicate. My mom checks on us daily, so, you know, to not hear from my sister is, is, is odd. This is not normal for us. So when she wasn't answering her phone, um, I didn't see her on social media. I think the last thing she posted was that she was out to eat. So, um, and then it just kind of went silent, which is again, unusual. What would you say to anyone out there who has any information, even the smallest amount of information, what would you say to that person about coming forward with that? What, how, what, what, what would you say to them? To please come forward. I mean, no one, 
like I said, I didn't expect to be here. You know, you see this type of stuff on TV and you think, you know, that couldn't happen to me. It could, because I never would have thought I would be here speaking on the behalf of my sister. So, you know, just as well as I'm in these, in these shoes, someone else can be too. And I know that they would want someone to come forward on their behalf. So I'm asking that someone come forward on my sister's behalf. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions for us as an agency? Uh, so the car was located. Was the car damaged? Was there any evidence? Was there any evidence of a struggle? Was there anything that... I'm going to invite Investigator Kilgore is the case agent. I'm going to invite him up to uh, answer that. Well, I guess the question gets to this. And is, is there any suspicion of foul play or something? Or, this, or is this a missing persons case? And Scott, there, can you... Can, wait. Okay. There, there's no suspicion of foul play necessarily at this time. Uh, there is some evidence that's been located that would lead one to believe that something has occurred. Uh, all that based on her lifestyle, the, the no communication with family, and the personal effects found in the car would lead us to believe that there may have been some type of foul play. And there was evidence recovered in the vehicle, but I'm not going to comment on what all that was at this time. But some personal effects. It was personal belongings. Can you tell us what personal effects were there that she would not go without? Her, her debit card, uh, her purse, uh, things like that. Uh, keys to her residence. Have, uh, have you located the cell phone at all? No. Uh, I'm um, her fiance. Um, and if anybody do know anything, um, could you please, you know, contact this uh, office and let them know. Like I said, no matter how small or big, because um, it's, it's just unusual. She would never not go without talking to those kids. You know, even me, you know, she would not go without talking to me, you know. When was the last time, sir, that you heard from her and, and what was that about? When she left from home. She left me and her daughter at home. We haven't seen her, you know. Before we know she was just going to go run errands and do some things and she's gone just like that. Then you, when did you suspect something was wrong? How long did that take? Uh, when it got late at night, 10, 11, and I figured because she should have been home by then. And I was calling, but the phone kept on the voicemail. So I figured wherever she at, I don't know. Maybe phone dead, and then after I, I don't know, after I sit around for a while and doze off to sleep, when it get about one in the morning, I know something definitely wrong because she's she's not going to be out after no one o'clock. <laughs>
I'm still trying to figure it out. I just, just feel like a dream. Additionally, a report by NCST stated that witnesses who lived in the complex with Reginald claim that he was associated with a male named Jeremy Walker Sr. who lived across the street from the couple. These witnesses also stated that Jeremy followed Reginald in the second vehicle when he moved Tiffany's car to College Park to give him a return ride. Jeremy and his girlfriend were questioned, but no further details were given about their association. Investigators never stated his motive for moving her vehicle or how he came to have it, so the case was dropped not long after it was opened. But then, on April 21st, 2021, authorities announced that Reginald was arrested again. The charges this time were for kidnapping, false imprisonment, assault with a firearm, and burglary from the incident in November 2020. Reginald pleaded not guilty to the charges and has been held without bond since that 2021 arrest. Yeah, authorities in Coweta County have not named Reginald Robertson as a suspect in the disappearance of Tiffany Foster, but this is now the second time they have charged him with crimes linked to an incident shortly before the mom of three vanished and Foster's family now growing more and more suspicious. To not be able to pick the phone up and call her, it hurts. On Wednesday, Foster's fiance, Reginald Robertson, was arrested and charged with kidnapping and aggravated assault. Charges authorities in Coweta County say stem from an incident before 35-year-old Foster was reported missing. Do you think that he has something to do with your sister's disappearance? Um, I do. I did not feel like he was a person that was speaking of someone that he lost. Brian says her sister and Robertson met two years ago and only recently got engaged. Now Robertson was taken into custody yesterday without incident. He is being held without bond. Live in Coweta County, Zach Summerson, CBS 46 News. Tiffany's family and friends have suffered a great deal. They have fought very hard to keep her disappearance fresh in the minds of the community. Good morning, everyone. My name is Edwin Rivera. I'm a lieutenant with the Coweta County Sheriff's Office. We're here to support uh, Tiffany's family and friends. Uh, we have vowed to uh, continue this effort in locating Tiffany. But we will not give up. Um, we want to do the best we can for the family. We're going to use every resource possible and every effort possible in locating her. This is a big step today and we thank everyone for coming out and helping us in this effort. If anyone has any information that would help us locate Tiffany, even if it's small information, please come forward because even small information can lead us to something bigger. That's right. So don't hesitate to contact the Sheriff's Office. You can contact myself, 770-253-150. Uh, As of 2023, foul play is suspected in Tiffany's disappearance. Although Tiffany's body has not been recovered, the evidence collected in this case confirmed that the mother may be unalive. And the months before Tiffany's disappearance, had you noticed anything unusual? Were you and your family aware of anything going on? Um, no. Um, a matter of fact, before she went missing, I mean, things seemed normal. Um, we often talk anyway so you know our communication didn't stop um that's why when she did go missing it was just so abrupt um, we knew something was wrong um i think prior to that we had wind up going out to lunch um, i know we had went to the movies um and she actually bought a new car so um, we were talking about her new car she showed it off to my mom so nothing was like a red flag or um, anything out of the usual, unusual for us. Can you take us back to, to March of 2021 and, and the day uh, Tiffany was last seen? What do you know about the last time that she was seen? And and when did you and your family realize that something was wrong? The day before, um, my, again, we always kind of talk. So when she didn't call or she wasn't on social media, we kind of knew something was wrong. And then my niece had called my mom and she was like, her mom didn't come home. So, you know, that sparked my mom to call me and me to call my sisters, um, my other sisters to kind of like, hey, have you talked to Tiffany? And no one had talked to her. So when my mom realized that it had been about 24 hours that she's been, you know, was missing, 
um, she went on ahead and called the authorities and started that process. And according to the NBC News report, um, he's not cooperating. And I know you can't get into too much about the investigation beyond that, but tell us about the family's interaction with law enforcement. Have they been helpful? Um, on his behalf, no, they have not. Um, again, like you stated, he has not been cooperative with them, which to me is a red flag because if this is someone that you care about and you are in love with, then you would be trying to do everything to bring them home, especially knowing that, you know, she has three children that really need her. Um, as far as with my side of the family, my mom, of course, she's been in contact with him as well as, um, you know, the sheriff's trying to do everything to assist them. Um, you know, I, I, it's a hard thing, but I understand my mom's position as far as having to go and speak to him and pretty much is like begging him to, um, come forward and say anything that would kind of help. Um, but again, he's he's not cooperating. It's just hard to, to cope with because I feel that somebody out there knows something and they're not coming forward. And if it was you or your family, um, you would want somebody to say something um, to help out. On August 3rd, 2023, after two years of no breaks in the case, the sheriff's office announced they added more charges to Reginald's case, but this time relating to her disappearance. Those charges include felony murder, malice murder, concealing the death of another, kidnapping, false imprisonment, forgery in the first degree, financial transaction card theft, and financial transaction card fraud. On October 16, 2023, Reginald Robertson was indicted on all charges for which he was charged on August 3rd. Tiffany Foster in Coweta County, the mother of three, has not been seen since early March 2021. That investigators have evidence now that Tiffany Foster was murdered and is never coming home. He deserves everything that's, that's going to come to him. As of 10 o'clock this morning, Reginald Robertson has been charged with felony murder, malice murder, concealing the death of another, kidnapping, false imprisonment, forgery in the first degree, financial transaction card theft, and financial transaction card fraud. My sister was such a sweet person, man. She was a very loved person. Like, like, why would somebody want to hurt her? We have been able to uncover a lot of evidence in this case, which shows that the relationship between Reginald and Tiffany was not good at all for the last week of her life. He needs to pay for what he did. And I want to get justice for my sister. In addition, Jeremy Walker Sr. was indicted as well on two charges concerning Tiffany's disappearance and murder, including theft by taking and concealing the death of another. Recent reports didn't go into further detail about the new findings. However, their arraignment has been set for November 15, 2023, where more information will be released. Literally, I think it's the not knowing that it's like driving us crazy because it leads your mind to think of so many things on the spectrum of, you know, from the worst case scenario to, okay, she, you know, she's going to walk through the door. You can't explain the feeling. You know, I have sad days where I just cry all day. On Valentine's Day, she would always make me a box with all the favorite candies and <clears throat> things that I like. I don't get any sleep wondering where she is what happened. I just want to know where my baby is. Before Tiffany disappeared, she was only months away from graduating, and she looked forward to a new career in law enforcement. If you have any information regarding the disappearance of Tiffany, please contact your local authorities.